Hello fun people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about scarification and vernalization. These are two terms that are kind of loosely flip-flopped around in the gardening community when it comes to seed starting. So this is a question I was asked in my DMs over on Instagram and I decided to hop on here real quick because I was just starting to start some seeds. Not that you should, these are really special seeds that I'm going to do a video on each one of them. But nonetheless, they both need scarification done to them in order for them to properly germinate. But first, make sure you let me know in the comments down below which seeds or which crops you want a how to grow done on. It's going to either be a blog post or a video depending on how much attention the plant in and of itself gets because I want to provide you guys kind of the tips and tricks to grow these things in colder climates in Canada or just in general. So make sure you put in the comments down below what crop you want to, or flower, whatever it is, that you want to learn to grow and where you're from. So house plants too. If you have any house plants out there you want to learn a little bit more about, I'm just really trying to build up the website almost as like a resource for you guys to use depending on what you want to garden because last year there were some Canadians actually that got a hold of my blog post and I just caught wind of photos that have been taken that have been sent back to me on the results that they got based on following my blog post. So scarification and vernalization are two very different things. Vernalization can be used for seeds. It can also be used for flowering. And basically what it refers to is a change in temperature that then spurs the onset of flowers turning into seeds or spurs the onset of germination. So vernalization is kind of what's happening outdoors right now with the seeds and bulbs that are in the ground. The temperature has cooled off. It's been cold for a set period of time and now it's about to warm up outside or it's going to warm up in a few months and then the plants will germinate. This is vernalization. Now you'll have on seed packets passion fruit uh, people out there. It's very common to see this on the back of the per uh, package. They will call for vernalization and they will tell you what temperature and for the duration of time that seed needs to be vernalized. Now in some cases if you get the seed packet and it doesn't direct you to vernalize it's likely that they vernalized it for you at the seed location at the location they had the seeds in they probably stored them in the fridge or the freezer whatever the case was and then they sent them out it will not hurt your seed if you choose to re-vernalize it because you've read that that seed requires vernalization in some way shape or form so the best way to do it is to cover it in a damp paper towel cloth or put it in water and then place it in the fridge or the freezer likely just the fridge for a majority of the seeds we're dealing with here as gardeners and you're just going to pop this in the fridge in a ziploc and leave it in there for a set period of time it's usually 24 to 48 hours i've seen some that have said like 72 but like i said even if you left them in there for 72, even if you left them in there for a week or two, it's not gonna hurt the seed. It's just going to trigger all the hormones and juices that need to be triggered to start growing. So that's what vernalization is. Now, scarification is something different. Technically, it is the weakening of the seed coat. So for those of us that have seeds out there that are hard, so this is like a gourd, a birdhouse gourd seed is a great example. This is a loofah seed. Yes, I'm trying to grow loofah for you guys. <laughs> I got so many requests on how to grow loofahs in Canada, so here we go, guys. <laughs> We're gonna give it a shot. But um, so this is kind of what a loofah seed looks like. It has a really hard outer coating, and these are ones that need to be scarified. And so all scarification is doing is it's weakening that outer seed coat. Peas, for example, need scarification, but in a lot of cases, peas, the scarification is done back at the seed warehouse. It's not done at your home. So for the packets, again, that you know they need scarification, you know birdhouse gourds need it, and you know loofahs need it. If it doesn't say it on the packet, you can still scarify on your own. It's not gonna harm the seed. 
All you're doing is you're weakening the seed coat in some way, shape, or form to allow the water to penetrate. So I've done quite a few videos on the anatomy of seeds, and in it I've talked about the kind of little belly button on a seed that allows moisture to get in, which causes all the chemical reactions that are necessary for a seed to grow, right? So some of these belly buttons are really sealed tight shut. <laughs> so what we need to do is we need to aid or go around the belly button and give the plant a different source in which it can obtain water. So you can do this with any seed, in particular seeds that have a really long germination time, such as loofahs, that have a high tendency of rotting, do better when they get scarification and then they're put in a paper towel and germinated under high heats. So I'm actually gonna do an Instapot germination uh, trick with you guys too, because I used it last year in a rush and it worked <laughs> really good. So if you're late at starting seeds or you have hard to start seeds such as loofahs, uh, yeah, the Instapot or some sort of heat is always a good idea. So on this loofah seed, I don't know if this is gonna show up, but um, so on the, oh God, try number four, okay. Hold the seed, Ashley, don't let it run away. So this is what a loofah seed looks like and it's really blurry, so that's wonderful. But here's the belly button on this end. You can see how it flattens off its square and then on this side, it's kind of like rounded. Um, so what you wanna do is you want to go in the side wherever the belly button is presumed to be. It's usually pretty obvious on these larger seeds. And all you're gonna do is you're going to take nail clippers and clip it. So you can see I have a little opening there and that's where the water is going to go into. Now you can use other methods for scarification. You can scratch it, you can crack it, you can do so many different things. You don't have to use nail clipper method. It's just convenient to use nail clipper method. Another method that people will use is put them in water and then freeze them and then they'll crack. You can rub the seeds. Get. I mean there's so many different ones. You just have to they're all the same thing. All we're doing is breaking that seed coating to allow that water to get in so we can allow for a germination. So the belly button on this guy is on this side, but I, what I like to do with the birdhouse gourds or what I find works best for germination is actually clipping off the teddy barriers. I don't know why it works, but it does. So then, there you go, that one's done too. Now these are ready to be popped into some paper towel and then germinated. What I'm gonna do with these though, is I'm probably gonna put these in the Instapot to show you guys how quick they germinate. So stay tuned for that video. That's literally all I have for you guys. That is scarification versus vernalization. Like I said, it doesn't hurt to do it even if your packet says not to or it doesn't say you need to. It's not gonna harm anything. Some manufacturers will do the work for you, others won't, but ultimately it does not matter. So if you wanna know which loofah seeds I got, I'll leave the link down below. And same with the birdhouse gourd, I will leave the link for the birdhouse gourd down below too. And then over on the website where I'm doing all the how to grows, I'm literally going through everything. I'm giving you the exact brand I'm using. Oh, literally the whole kit and caboodle that you need to grow these guys at home. So I want to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments down below what bizarro seeds you're growing this year. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.